This tunnel that you are seeing is not an ordinary tunnel but it is literally the biggest tunnel in the world that passes under the sea. This 50 km long tunnel, which is made 250 feet below the bottom of the sea, is the mega project that engineers call the seventh wonder of the world. The biggest reason for this is its construction. 13,000 workers working together in extremely difficult conditions and digging in such a part of the earth that the weight of the entire sea is falling on. A small mistake can fill this tunnel with water and bury both humans and machines forever. And that too, just a few seconds. Approximately 13,000 years ago, when the last ice age was ending, it separated today's England and Europe from each other. The reason for their separation is this part of the sea, which is now called the English Channel. Although this channel is quite widespread, it becomes quite narrow at this point. And here, England and France are only 33 kilometers apart from each other. Many times, this distance has been tried to end. But these experiments were stopped after many deaths. Because maybe at that time, technology was very limited. But at the end of the 20th century, when technology was moving towards its peak, then once again, England and France were thought to connect with each other by land. This was the time of the 1980s, when it was also possible to make the largest machinery. In addition to the machine, there was another challenge, and that was to convince England. Yes, the cold water of the English Channel has always given England a heavy hand on its enemies. From Napoleon to Hitler, many of England's enemies made plans to conquer it. But it was the harsh conditions of the English Channel that always kept England's back heavy. In World War II, Hitler also launched a secret project to dig an underwater tunnel from the village of Calais in France. So that England could be controlled. But this project could never start. Anyway, after Hitler's death and World War II, there was a lot of change in Europe. Business started booming and there was happiness everywhere. France and England, who were once enemies, started trading through the English Channel. Time passed and in 1986, these two countries decided to remove this barrier and connect England with Europe. There were a lot of protests against this decision in England, because many people were very proud of England's island empire. After many months of long talks, both countries finally agreed to build an undersea tunnel. It was named the Channel Tunnel, which is often referred to as the Euro Tunnel. In the agreement, it was decided that the teams of England and France would dig a tunnel from their side and the two tunnels would come to the center point and connect. This project seemed like a huge failure even before it started. Building a 38 km long tunnel under the sea was not a task that a single engineering firm would dare to do. Finally, it was decided that 10 engineering firms would collaborate with each other to construct this project. Before designing the channel tunnel, it was necessary to know which transport would run in the tunnel and where it would start and where it would end. With mutual understanding, it was decided that a total of three tunnels would be built, in which a railway loop would run between England and France. One of its terminals would be in the city of France, while in England, there would be a second terminal on Folkestone. The total length of the tunnel would be 56 kilometers, of which the part below the sea would be 38 kilometers long. In 1986, the construction of the Channel Tunnel was finally started. The biggest problem that the engineering team had to face was the Tunnel Boring Machine, also known as TBM. Because no such project had been made before, the TBM of this particular diameter was also not available. First, this TBM machine would have to be made from scratch. Thousands of miles away in Seattle, Washington, the work of making this special tunneling machine was entrusted to the Robbins Company, who are experts in making boring machines. After completion, this giant machine would be 800 feet long and weigh 1,500 tons. Its diameter would be 50 feet, in front of which would be hundreds of sharp blades of tungsten carbide. The hydraulic legs would push it forward. A conveyor belt would be installed in the machine to remove the dust and broken stones, which would take the TBM to the service train, and then this train would take the TBM out of the tunnel. This tunnel boring machine was a miracle in itself. Compared to the old technique, in which the tunnel was made by blasting inside the mountains, this machine was a great blessing for the developers. But this new technology also brought a lot of dangers with it. If the water leaks from somewhere even 250 feet below the bottom of the sea, the pressure would be so high that it would drown both humans and the machine in seconds. A survey found that there is a layer of chalk under the English side of the sea, which would prevent the leakage of water from entering the tunnel. 
But on the French side, there are a lot of cracks on the ground below the sea, where this TBM will not be able to work. For this, a separate TBM was decided to be made, which would be a submarine along with the tunnel boring. It would be able to tolerate the same pressure of water as the World War II submarines could. When this machine was ready, it brought a new challenge with it. How to bring it 200 feet below the ground? For this work, the machine was disassembled and each piece was brought down separately. It had to be reassembled inside the ground, which took several months and millions of dollars. The project started two years ago. In 1988, the excavation work was finally started on both sides. Disposing of such a large quantity of mud and stones was also a very big task in itself. In one day, this machine was cutting 750 square feet of stones, and in just one hour, a pile of 2,400 tons was being collected. On the English side, this pile was placed between Foxton and Dover under the Shakespeare cliff to make this country park called Sempire Hall. And that's why it's a little out of the coastal line. The pile collected from the French side was in the form of mud, which was placed near some gate in the Font Pigouin Valley to make an artificial lake. On one side, such a large pile was being pulled out of the tunnel, so on the other side, there was a lot of stuff to take inside. As the TBM was boring, it was also necessary to seal the loose rock and chalk layer at the same speed. Because if the water above the sea made its way through the tunnel, then it would be impossible to stop it. For this purpose, round concrete slabs of the size of the tunnel were being fitted. This concrete is stronger than the concrete used in nuclear plants. About 750,000 concrete slabs were used in the channel tunnel made of reinforced steel. The weight of a whole ring of these slabs is equal to 40 tons, which means this is as much concrete as eight Burj Khalifa-like buildings can be built from. They were put in a service train and taken to the tunnel, where there was a special machine that was fitting them in its place. Many weeks passed and then months. The tunnel was slowly increasing from both sides. Everyone was waiting for just one thing, when will these two tunnels meet? But as easy as it seems, it was actually very complicated. If both the TBMs do not move forward in the right position, then it is obvious that both the tunnels will never meet under the sea. For the solution to this problem, a laser beam guidance system was being used. One laser was installed in an English machine and the other in a French machine. Both the guidance systems were wirelessly connected to each other. Whenever a machine changed its position, the guidance system would send a signal to the main computer and change the position of the boring machine's head with a hydraulic jack, which would align both the tunnels with each other again. Whether this guidance system was working properly or not, to confirm this, both the machines would be shut down at the last 100 meters. And then a steel rod would be sent to the next site to confirm whether the position of both the tunnels was really accurate or not. After three years of continuous boring, finally the time had come when the distance between the tunnels was only 100 meters. And according to the plan, a steel rod was sent. The position of both the tunnels was almost accurate, there was only a difference of 10 inches, which is within the allowed limit. Now the biggest and toughest test of the engineering team. It was very important to make one of the two TBMs commit suicide. Yes, because there were two feet thick concrete slabs in both the tunnels, that is, the diameter of the tunnel was less than 50 feet and was now 46 feet. And the diameter of the TBM, i.e. the boring machine, was 50 feet. At the end of the work, the 50 foot tall machine could not come out of the 46 foot tall tunnel. That is why the solution to this problem was found that one of the two machines would have to be removed from the way, which is called mechanical suicide by engineers. So this sacrifice was made on the TBM in England. Its angle was changed and it was turned towards the ground and after going down several hundred feet, it was left there, where it has been buried to this day. Now the final moment of construction had come close. The French TBM moved forward and finally entered the England tunnel and when it reached here, the French TBM was disassembled and taken out. Now you must be thinking that the disassembly could have been done to the England TBM as well. So why did they bury it? In fact, the more money was being spent on disassembling the boring machine, the less money the new machine would be ready. That is why the company first sees which option will give them less loss. Therefore, it is decided that it has to be buried forever or it has to be taken out again. For the first time in 13,000 years, a land connection was going to be built between the two countries again. For this event, all the workers who were working, one worker from each country was chosen. They broke the last layer of chalk manually with a jackhammer and exchanged flags with each other for the media event. 
Thousands of years ago, after being separated due to glaciers, finally England and France were reunited. It was really a great miracle that was celebrated. The hard work of many years had finally paid off. After completing the finishing work, on May 6, 1994, the finally Channel Tunnel was opened. If the cost of this project is adjusted in today's date, it becomes 12 billion pounds, i.e. 1190 billion rupees. At the peak of construction, 13,000 workers worked in the Channel Tunnel, while 10 workers were killed in an accident while working. There are a total of three tunnels in this project, two for trains and a small tunnel is built, which is used in emergencies. Today, about 60,000 passengers use this tunnel every day, which includes 4,600 trucks, 140 coaches and 7,300 cars, which are parked in the cargo train and the tunnel is crossed.